What's up nerds, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm Doctor Strange and this is another list. I'm not actually Doctor Strange by the way, I'm Connor and Ro, And I will keep control of my hands for the whole video, I hope. Be sure you hit like, subscribe, and wreck that notification bell with your forehead, just because. Also be sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to be reading out comments from a past video. If you commented on one of them, you have a 50-50 shot of that video being chosen, so stick around. Until then, let's get into our list of the Top 10 Alternate Superheroes heroes who should replace the originals. Number 10, Headpool, the Merc with half a mouth. This version of Deadpool hails from Earth 2149, in which everyone has been turned into zombies. Even though not much is known about this version of Wade, you can assume it's probably similar to the original, hence why he's only number 10 on the list. While he still had a body after he got infected, he attacked the Silver Surfer. He was later brought to Earth 616 and calls himself the Merc with half a mouth, since most of his jaw is missing. Even though he had been killed when Wondar the Aquarian threw Wade at Jennifer Kale, Kale retaliated by luring Deadpool into blades that tore him to shreds. Deadpool was taken away by armor and was now only a head. After that he essentially affects all menfish and it spreads from there. The only reason I have him on this list is because this story is so Deadpool. Like you're literally just a head but you managed to escape from armor and then escape from black talon. It must have taken a lot of planning. Way to use your head Wade. Number 9 Soldier Supreme Gamora, man. Why did you think it was a good idea to merge half of the world's souls with the other? I mean, the result was pretty cool, but come on. Anyway, Gamora got a hold of the Infinity Gala and all hell broke loose. She merged half of the population with the other, this creating the Soldier Supreme, a mix of Captain America and me. The Super Soldier Serum that Cap originally took was now just a cover-up for a mystical arts ritual. And after being stuck in the Dark Dimension for decades, he got released by accident when Mordok opened a portal to try to summon Satan. Really? Like I'm right here. Rogers projected his astral form into Mordok and realized that he was the combination of two souls, Modok and Baron Mordo. Modok told him to use his eye of Agamodin, yeah, to find the truth for himself before fading away. When the Soldier Supreme got to London, he was debriefed on what he missed. He then used the eye to realize he was made of the souls of Steve Rogers and Doctor Strange, which for some reason you all think is me. I'm Connor, guys. Then he objected to Adam Warlock's ideas of reversing things, but ended up letting the world continue in the Soul Gem. Hey, I think he should be brought back. Also, of course it's Doctor Strange who figures out that the whole world is a lie and that's not the way it should be, right? Like, come on. Like, this this guy is a doctor, right? Next up at number 8, Death Mask. Death Mask is another version of Deadpool from Earth 11638 and had a brain tumor which Reed Richards removed. When he did, however, Wade became a super genius and used his intellect to erect a criminal empire. He wears the Deadpool colors but in the style of Doctor Doom, and ironically in this universe, there is also a Death Wish who dresses up in the Deadpool suit using Doctor Doom colors. I think this would be a good thing for the Marvel Universe to run with. The only issue I can see with it is that it's quite the deviation from the normal Deadpool storyline, and fans may not be willing to accept that. Don't flame me in the comments. Number 7, Spider Gwen. This is some tragic crap, guys. Before the comic started, Gwen Stacy was bitten by a radioactive spider, yada yada yada. As Gwen, she starts dating Peter Parker and bullies Harry Osborn, who ends up liking her. Like, dude. Just because she's mean to you doesn't mean she likes you. Anyway, Peter becomes obsessed with Spider-Gwen, not knowing it's Gwen Stacy, even though it's literally in the name. Like, how many Gwens do you know, man? Anyway, wanting to be like her, Peter creates a serum that will turn him into a lizard man. He gets bullied again on prom night, which prompts him to take the formula and become the lizard. Honestly though, I relate. If someone had turned into a giant lizard at my prom, it would have been worth the 80 buck ticket. My prom was bad. Gwen, not knowing it's Peter, fights him and accidentally kills him. When he reverts back to his human form, he says, I just wanted to be special like you and dies in her arms. Now everyone thinks Spider-Gwen killed Peter Parker and everyone hates her. The reason I put her on this list is because recently I saw a Spider-Gwen trailer on YouTube and I thought it was really real. It was supposedly starring Sabrina Carpenter and I was convinced. Then it was pointed out to me that it was fan-made and I got thoroughly disappointed. Let's see a Spider-Gwen live action movie, please. Number 6, Spider-Man 2099. Now, I may be partial to this version since Miguel O'Hare is my favorite alternate Spider-Man, but I would have loved to see Miguel as a part of the main canon. Aside from stopping Stan Lee from having another character with two of the same initials, especially because those initials are PP. But Miguel's suit is also so much cooler than Peter's, no offense. 
Miguel O'Hara was awarded enrollment into the Alchemax School for Gifted Youngsters, which is a renovated version of the X-Men headquarters. Eventually in his life, Miguel becomes the head of the genetics program at Alchemax and is tasked with creating new corporation controlled super powered soldiers called Corporate Raiders, which is honestly pretty accurate. Miguel is inspired by records of Spider-Man and hopes to one day create a similarly powered individual. After a human test subject dies in trial though, Miguel wants to resign. But his boss Tyler drugs him with the highly addictive drug Rapture, which genetically bonds with the user. The only way to keep getting this drug is by staying at Alchemax, but Miguel has his genes stored away. So when he sneaks in to try to reset his genetics to before he had the Rapture, he accidentally combines himself with the DNA of a spider and gets powers. This is not a reason to do drugs people, just suffer from bites trying to get powers like we all did. Me several times. Number 5 Batman Beyond This is on the list because of the animation, now don't click off yet, let me explain. The pilot of the series begins in 2019, this year. In his late 50s, Bruce Wayne still fights crime in his high tech Batman suit. In the middle of the rescue, Batman suffers a mild heart attack, and at risk of being beaten to death, Bruce had to threaten to use a gun. When he realized that the gun he used was the same one as the one who killed his parents, he decides to retire, and shuts down the Batcave. His allies have either died naturally or retired, and his partners either left or had a falling out with him. All of his enemies are retired, dead, in jail or exiled, and he's severed all ties with the Justice League. His work as Batman is done. 20 years later, Terry McGinnis stays out past curfew one night to meet up with his girlfriend. They get harassed by the Jokers, a gang, and they get chased to Wayne Manor. Bruce tries to fight off the attackers, but his heart gets aggravated in the process, so Tyler has to rush him back inside. He explores the mansion and finds the Batcave, which drives Bruce to chase him out, obviously. When he gets home, his father had pulled an Uncle Ben and was killed by the Jokers, the same gang who attacked Tyler, hence why I say an Uncle Ben. After realizing what his father found and Bruce refusing to help, he steals his bat suit and goes out on his own accord. I like this story, I think it would do well in the modern day, especially because Bruce is supposed to retire this year. Number 4, Superwoman. Hailing from DC's Earth 3, this Amazonian native version of Lois Lane is one evil she is a member of the crime syndicate and has relationships with Ultraman and Owlman. I was about to say isn't that illegal, but then I realized she's evil. She was also sleeping with Alexander Luther, the crime syndicate's greatest enemy and one of the heroes of Earth 3. She's also a freak. She has a parody of the Lasso of Truth called the Lasso of Submission. And my god, that sounds like a fun weekend. And apparently, she posed for, let's say suggestive. Yeah, suggestive photos for Earth 3 James Olsen in exchange for him doing favors. I actually knew someone like this in high school. Huh. Wait. Are we on Earth 3? And is this just one big narrative that we're all being forced to play out for the entertainment of others? Huh. Either way, she also had a son with Luther 2 while being married to Ultraman and sleeping with Owlman. What the hell? Number 3, Iron Woman. What if Iron Man was a woman? Well, Natasha Stark is just that. Imagine an Iron Man, who is a woman, okay, falls in love with Steve Rogers and ends up marrying him, causing civil war to never happen. Well, welcome to Earth 3490, where Natasha Stark is the wife of a 100 year old man and civil war never happened. Well, this universe was found by Reed Richards, who came across it while looking for realities in which the civil war ended differently. He stated that the two were deterrent to each other's more aggressive behavior, which allowed this Earth's Reed Richards to successfully complete the superhero registration program and begin the 50 state initiative. Getting close to the end at number 2 we have White Tiger. Ava Ayala, the fifth character to assume the White Tiger mantle, she is the sister of Hector Ayala and enrolled in the Avengers Academy. She inherited the White Tiger amulet from her brother after he died at the hands of Gideon Mace. She states that the White Tiger is a family legacy and she intends to honor it. With her determination and sense of right and wrong, I think this character should have been there from the start. She is a badass and nobody tells her no. And with those nails, they can be as deadly as mine. Rawr. Number 1 Iron Lantern Hal Stark is a millionaire and the founder of Stark Aircraft. He was developing a flight simulator when it took off with him in it. He discovered it was being drawn to an alien spacecraft that he had crashed a few yards away from. Even though he had metal shards in his chest, he still went to investigate. Like dude, you're dying. He found an alien who died before he could speak, and then now, realizing that he was dying too, he used the alien tech to make a suit of armor powered by a battery that he found in the wreck. This suit not only saved his life, but also gave him incredible powers, allowing him to create any object out of green energy. Because of the battery being powered by, oh, the living planet. 
Okay. He used this suit and became the Iron Lantern and defeated the aliens that shot down the alien he had found. Because even though he didn't talk to the guy, he still wanted to avenge him. Well, that's it for this list. What did you guys think? Is there any alternate versions of superheroes that you would like to see become mainstream? Let me know in the comment section down below and be sure you like and subscribe and use all of your might to destroy that notification bell. I'm now going to read up some comments from my first ever video on the channel, the top 10 scary black lanterns you need to know about. Also, speaking of comments, y'all need to chill out. My god. Camilla's Cave of Legends said, I like Connor, his delivery and humor. Yep, I need to see him as a host here. Hashtag keep Connor around. Thank you, that made my day. Hashtag keep Connor around. Edward Hall said, hi Connor, I'm fragile as well. Okay, this, this whole point is getting misconstrued. I said that as a joke. Could you guys not tell the sarcasm in my voice when I was saying that? Like, come on, I'm not fragile. Attack me, but don't. Mike Delaney said, do plastic man. Dude, that seems like it would hurt. And Caden Brown said, I think you're my new favorite host. You better not with me on this one because that actually makes me ecstatic. Please don't be messing with me. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been and shall remain Connor Monroe and I'll see you in another video.